talking about the, the wrist with respect to flexion and extension, right? So in this case, this might be my left wrist. If I put it up and I'm facing this way. So palmar or anterior, you guys would see would be wrist flexion. And dorsal posterior will be wrist extension. So in this case, the radius is what shape? Okay. So the moving surface, that proximal carpal row is convex. So we see that with flexion, the red osteokinematic motion, we have a posterior glide of the proximal carpal row with wrist flexion. With wrist extension, the blue arrow for osteokinematics, and it's moving in a dorsal or posterior direction, we have an anterior glide. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll come back to that here in a second. Uh, so for the setup for this, the patient is supported, their forearm is gonna be on the bench. Now I need to think about my line of force, right? So my line of force, there's a little bit of a lift to the radius. So I don't wanna push straight down, and especially if their, their forearm is pointing upwards, my direction of force is slightly in this direction. I'll look at it, we'll get it set up here. Okay. Right, so my direction of force can't be straight down towards the ground. It's gotta be parallel to that concave joint surface. It's gotta be parallel to the radius. So I could do one of two things. My right hand in this case is gonna stabilize the distal radius and ulna. And I can lean in this way to make sure my forearm is pointed in that direction. And it's stabilizing and moving it doesn't take a lot of a weight shift, but I still don't want to be pushing with my elbow. Okay. And down, and I'm grasp, grasping her proximal carpal row as close to that joint line with my web space right here. Okay. In a nice neutral position, flexion and extension. A slight ulnar deviation to that resting position. And I can feel a good amount of Glide there. I don't want to crush her hand, so I'm, I've got a, I don't know how to describe it, a soft but firm grip? I don't know, it's kind of weird, right? I don't want to smash her wrist, but I'm, I want a good firm surface on my, my web space here. The other thing I could do just to think about the angle is if I just drop this down a little bit, now that puts straight down my, my direction, so now I don't have to be worried about so much that outward direction. So now her forearm is parallel to the ground, and so parallel to that joint surface is straight down towards the ground. So that would be a, what direction of the glide is that? Palmer or an anterior glide. So that would be associated with what osteokinematic motion? Extension. Extension. For the dorsal glide, just have them supinate. And I can do that same motion, neutral flexion and extension. Stabilizing the radius here with this hand. Least amount of force to get to that end range. These are subtle, easy motions. We can do a, a subtle, a slight, distraction with these techniques. Just remember, the more you pull outward, the less motion you'll have. So just a subtle distraction with that glide, okay? So that's for flexion and extension. Let me go ahead and stop the share.